the divergence theorem, section 17.8. So we're going to look at how we use this to calculate flux. Well, so let's go back to the definition of what the divergence is. So number one, well, we're going to look what, what does it mean to find dF at a point, you know, like back in the definition of the derivative. Well, the derivative, you know, is the slope at a given point. Well, the derivative, I mean, the, the divergence of f at a point uh, represents either the, ex the expansion or, complex or compression, contraction of the vector field at that given point. And well, in this case, a vector field will be said to be either a source, if we're talking about expansion, a sink in the case of contraction, or incompressible if it's source free. Well, uh, we calculated divergence a couple sections ago, and we found out that uh, it's a source if the divergence, uh, where is it? DVF is a positive number, is a sink. If the divergence is a negative value as in, or is incompressible, that is source free, if the divergence is, whoops, is zero, right? Divergence is zero, so it's incompressible, it's source free. And well, again, this is also this, the three D version of the, of the second version of Green's theorem. The, first, the, the one that we just did, the Stokes' theorem, was the 3D version for uh, circulation, right? Circulation on a path that belongs to the, that is the boundary of the surface. In this case, we're gonna look at the flux in a 3D over, over, a, over a solid, you know? Well, let's recall what Green's theorem told as well. The line integral, the form, F dy minus ddx, we call it, there's two forms, and you, might, you, you should have on your sheet of notes for the exam. Um, the two versions, uh, the one that has the, uh, the F dy minus line, the negative in the middle, and that's uh, gonna be the one that relates the two-dimensional uh, divergence, not the curl this time. All right. Well, so in this case, we are going to evaluate the flux in a similar way that we evaluated the circulation on a boundary of a surface. We're going to evaluate. We're going to find the the uh, what's it called? The flux uh, on a on a solid, also along along a given path. So, in other words, so we're we're getting from. Uh, the divergence in one dimension to the divergence in, in three dimension. I mean, the two-dimensional divergence, and we're going to go with the divergence in three dimensions. And in this case, uh, instead, so here is the thing. Instead of evaluating uh, a surface integral, we are going to evaluate a uh, triple integral over a solid region. Again, this is, this is the analogous, again, like back when we evaluated these line integrals, which is kind of tedious to parameterize every single time. And even if we had to parameterize piecewise, uh, you know, to come up with three or more integrals, you know, um, that was tedious. But then Green Syrup came to the rescue, so eventually evaluate, I mean, essentially evaluate the line integral by finding the area in a way, right? So this time, instead of evaluating surface integrals, remember surface integrals, they were tedious to even set up. I mean, we're gonna skip that part and just go with a triple integral over a solid region. You'll see how, how is this gonna work in the first example. Oh, well, number one, let's, uh, let's name the theorem. Let's uh, talk about the theorem real quick. And well, let D be a solid region bounded by a closed surface in a similar way that it's supposed to zero, but in this case, that's for surface, uh, for rather for flux. And it's, or, it's oriented by a unit normal vector directed outward from D, from the solid D. If F is a, if F is a vector field whose component functions have continuous partial derivatives, blah, 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 the usual conditions that we have to make sure that they are satisfied, well, this surface integral, we will evaluate it 
by a triple integral instead. And that is going to be instead the divergence, not the curl. The diver, recall that the curl was the cross product between the nabla operator and the vector field. In this case, the divergence is the dot product. So n is a unit normal vector s to be determined by the orientation of s, all right? So the usual. OK, determine the total outward flux of f. Uh, given by 2xy in the direction of i minus 2y plus z in the direction of j plus 2z in the direction of k. Z, I mean s through the surface of the solid q bounded by the plane 3x plus 2y plus 2z equals to 12. And the coordinate planes, well, this is key, the coordinate planes, you'll see how. Uh, so number one, let's, let's draw the graph of this plane. So the graph of this plane, well, we can graph it by, um, in this case, the, the x and y and z intercept. So the x intercept, make this to 0, so that's a 4. And then make x and, y, x and z 0, that's 12 over 2, that's a 6. And uh, make 2 and, did I? OK, never mind. Yeah, so that's going to be also 6. And well, so that's going to be our plane. Notice they're also asking us to consider the, the coordinate plane. So that is this wall right here, this other wall, and the floor, essentially. And of course, I know this one is going to be a little hard to draw, but I'm going to use a highlighter to make it clearer. So I'm going to use this yellow. Okay, back to surface integral. So, and I, do, I, I don't think I actually uh, mentioned what, what, a, what a surface integral is. So essentially what the surface integral uh, measures is, well, you can think of a, uh, for example, about a window, screen of the window, you know, when you open the window, there's always, well, depending on where you are, there's, there's always air coming in, right? So uh, in this case, this surface integral is measuring the amount of air coming in or maybe out uh, per unit of time. Or, you know, when, when you are, well, 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 you might have heard of, uh, of the process called osmosis to, uh, to clear water, to clean water, you know, to get rid of those uh, pollutants and clear it so we can recycle, so, so they can recycle water. So that water goes through membranes, you know, and those membranes are surfaces. So again, so that's what a, what a, what a flux integral measures, uh, or a, sur a surface integral, which is a flux integral, well, vice versa, rather. Well, so that's the amount of, in this case, the liquid that goes through the surface. Well, in this case, so here is the thing. We need to find the, and you don't want to do that. You will have to evaluate over four separate regions. Number one, four separate surface integrals. Number one, flux across the plane given by 3x plus 2y plus 2z equals to 12. That is having this normal unit vector, right? Well, I mean, hopefully the perspective helps a little bit. Number two, uh, flux across uh, the surface in the xy plane. That is when z equals to zero. And again, the orientation is downwards, right? So that goes down, okay? With the normal vector, it goes down. And number three, flux across the surface in the yz plane That is when x equals to 0. And in this case, the yz, that'll be this vector 
pointing towards the back or uh, of that wall. Okay, for those of you who may have not seen what I what I did, how I drew this, that's actually the vector behind. And number four, uh, what do we have? Uh, flux across the surface in the x z plane, where in this case, uh, what's this? Uh, it's y equals to zero. That is, we're going to have this vector endpointed in that direction, right? So we're looking, we're looking for flux in these four directions of this tetrahedron. Uh, remember, right, remember how tedious was to set up these integrals, f dot n ds, especially because this ds, it's a big radical, one plus the, the sum of the squares of the partial derivative. Do you feel like doing that four times? No. Thanks, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. However, we have the divergence theorem to do this in a quicker way. The divergence theorem, so in essentially we would have to, well, like, it's the analogous of having to parameterize every single uh, every single path in the piece or in the piecewise region, I mean every single every single path, yes, every single path to make it a piecewise continuous. Uh, but in this case, we will be evaluating four, four surface integrals. So in this case, let's do the first example, but using the divergence theorem. And well, so number one, uh, the divergence theorem. Let's find the divergence, the divergence of f which in this case is nabla dotted with f, that is the partial with respect x, comma, the partial with respect y, comma, the partial with respect z, dotted with the function f, g, h. And while we're given a vector field, uh, well, it's in the, well, you guys have it in paper. You, you can see it from the, from the upper part of the paper. I have the paper here as well. And well, f, in this case is, uh, what is it, 2x plus y, g equals to, careful, negative 2y plus z, and h equals to 2z. So let's find the partial, okay, when we do this dot product, component by component, what we're going to do is to find the partial derivative of f with respect x, the partial of, with respect g, with respect to y, of g and the partial of h with respect z. So that is, okay, so that's, uh, uh, okay, let me, let me write down the whole thing. Why not? Partial with respect x, partial with respect to y, and partial with respect z. And that's uh, 2x plus y, negative 2y plus z and 2z. And well, partial of the first component with respect x, isn't that a 2? Partial of the second component with respect y, well, even if we distribute this negative sign, I mean the z is just going to get zeroed out because it's a constant. So the derivative of negative 2y, that's a negative 2. And the partial of 2z with respect z, that's a 2. Cancel these twos. The divergence is two. All right. So we're going to set a triple integral. That is, the surface integral. Instead of evaluating four surface integrals, uh, that is um, uh, of s f dotted with n d big S for surface. That's the tri triple integral over the region Q of the divergence of F dV. But what's the divergence? Isn't that a constant? So that we can just take it in front of the triple integral. And in this case, we will have to find the volume only. Well, uh, well, unfortunately, it's not a sphere. It's not a, a rectangular box that so we can easily get that volume. But well, uh, you'll see what's going to happen. So that's the triple integral over Q of 2 dv. So yes, in this case, we will have to iterate the integral, unfortunately. 
So this will be, uh, I'm not going to have enough space over here, so that's the triple integral. I'm going to leave some space for the limit. And that's uh, two times dz dy dx. Well, so let's look at z. Again, the z is like the rooftop of minus the floor, essentially, from the surface in 3D that we're given, which in this case, okay, let me go a little bit higher here. So that's the equation of the plane solved for z in this case, right? So what do I have over here? I'm afraid I did a silly mistake for whatever reason. Uh, and yes, I did. Well, I had a little typo here. This one was not supposed to be a 2. This one was supposed to be just a z, all right? On the, equa on the equation of the plane. And therefore, this has to be a, a 12. Because that's what I had in my notes. But, uh, but I know I typed the wrong equation for, for the plane. So when we solve the equation, oh, whoa, whoa, hold on. Let me do it over here because I have my solid here. That means uh, z, or rather, z will vary between 0 and 12 minus 3x minus 2y. And let's look at our projection in the xy plane. So that is going to be this diagonal line. And well, those intercepts are 6 and 4. And well, that's going to be the equation y equals negative slope, negative 6 over 4. That's negative 3 halves of x plus the value of the y-intercept, which is 6. And well, so that's going to be our limits for y. And, well, let's go back to the triple integral. So z varies between 0 and 12 minus 3x minus 2y. And 0 from, from y varies between 0 and negative 3 halves x plus 6. And x varies between 0 and 4. Where did I get that 0 and 4? Because I got that from the projection. That's the, that's the x-intercept. And that's telling us varies from zero, between 0 and 4, all right? So that's our integral, and that should give us the value of 48, which is a lot better than evaluating four surface integrals, right? Okay, let's see what's next. Uh, next example. Let's use the divergence theorem to evaluate the surface integral, the double integral, where f is the vector field x squared negative 2y and 2z and, the, and s is the prism, the rectangular prism bounded by the coordinate planes x equals to 3, y equals to 2, and z equals to 4. So let's draw our region of integration in this case. Uh, real quick. So number one. Whoops. Oh, come on. Okay, so that's going to be um, x equals 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that's the base. That's uh, from here, I'm going to do the same thing. So that's the rectangular box over which we are going to find the surface, to evaluate the surface integral, the flux integral more in particular. Now, look at this picture. How many surfaces do we have on that rectangular box? One top is six, right? Did you feel like evaluating six surface integrals? No. We're going to use the divergence theorem. So let's find the divergence, divergence of f. That's uh, essentially uh, the partial with respect x, the partial with respect y, partial with respect z. Whoops. That's vector notation. And x squared, negative 2y, and 2z. So in this case, the partial of, a, of x squared with respect x, that's 2x. The partial of negative 2y with respect y, that's negative um, negative 2, and the partial of 2z with respect uh, z, that's plus 2. 
it all reduces to 2x only. All right? And well, what does that mean? Uh, well, so let's evaluate, set up the, the surface integral of f dotted with n ds. So instead, we're going to evaluate the triple integral of the divergence of f dv over the region q. Well, so what's the divergence of f? Well, in this case, uh, check something out. Number one, the divergence is 2x. And in this case, well, let's iterate dz, dy, dx. And well, it would have been great that the divergence were only a constant value because we can just take it outside of the integral and find the volume of this rectangular box, right? However, our integrand right here, the divergence is not, it's variable actually, so no, we were not, it's not just gonna be the volume. So we would have to iterate the whole triple integral well. And in this case, it's really easy to set up this integral because it's a rectangular region. It's a rectangular box rather, not a rectangular region. So all the limits start at zero. Uh, at, I mean, z varies between zero and four, y varies between zero and two, and x varies between zero and three. And evaluating this triple integral should give us 72. A lot better than evaluating six surface integrals, right? Much better. Uh, let's do, hmm, let's see.